Charles. I am Chief Scientific Officer at First IQ. And I have a 30 year background in clinical and healthcare research. And I also serve as a professor at the University of Colorado Business School, where I teach health information technology. I work at First IQ, which is a health information technology company that utilizes blockchain and artificial intelligence for healthcare organizations, life sciences organizations. And I am involved in helping these organizations understand and implement how blockchain can best meet their technology needs, as well as I help them with their due diligence for regulatory compliance. Blockchain is used in healthcare in hundreds of ways. And instead of offering specific use cases, it may be best for me to just kind of do an overview and help healthcare organizations to, to think about blockchain differently than they often do. So when I interact with healthcare organizations, one of the first things that I need to do is kind of give them an an explanation of what blockchain is and what it isn't. First and foremost, it is not cryptocurrency. And most of the ways that we implement blockchain in healthcare involve a private and permissioned capability that protects the health information involved. So once we get past the misconceptions, then it's really about, instead of offering a solution out of a box, its utilization of blockchain as a piece of the health information infrastructure so that blockchain can assist organizations in better enabling the technologies they already have instead of replacing them and creating more patient-centered capabilities and further connecting many of their health information sources. A common misconception that I hear is that blockchain is in its infancy for healthcare, or that there's a lot of hype involved. And the answer to that is actually pretty nuanced. So there is some hype in that there are some organizations that have not yet achieved a commercial solution. And so they are out there selling the hope of what they believe they can achieve. And, and that is hype. There are also some new solutions being advertised that are still at the proof of concept or they're still very early in development. And I think those are the ones that get some of the early attention and may cause some of the misconception that blockchain is still very early in its development. It's important to recognize though that blockchain has far reaching enterprise level implementations already in fact, um, some organizations have had blockchain in place at an enterprise level solution for several years already. What we're going to see over time is that more and more of these implementations become commercialized, become effective, and organizations will start sharing with their shareholders, their stakeholders, their patients, that this is a piece of the technology that they have been using for a while. Another misconception I hear is that blockchain is too public or cannot meet the regulatory requirements for health information, and that is totally false. It's totally false. Instead, when we think about how blockchain can be designed from the ground up, it can be designed to meet the technical safeguards required of HIPAA or the controls required of 21 CFR Part 11, which are the FDA regulations for electronic records and electronic signatures. When we think about blockchain as a health information technology, it actually fits nicely into the current regulations for health information technology and just requires a very purposeful approach on how the technology is designed, how it's implemented, how the vendor does its due diligence for validation and documentation, and then how the healthcare or life sciences organization also does its due diligence. So it absolutely can meet the regulations.
blockchain is distributed by nature in the sense that there are separate storage locations and redundant capabilities designed as part of the technology. It's, it's, when we think of blockchain as a set of tools and technologies, one of the capabilities that is very effective is the distribution. And the fact that we can work collaboratively among organizations to create a consortium which can achieve more together than each of the organizations can do alone. When creating a consortium or a distributed solution, it is important to have a solid governance structure with careful planning in advance and ongoing. So when one strategy to think about the governance is to think about blockchain as a health information technology and how healthcare organizations would evaluate and implement a health information technology. Organizations are very good at creating solid evaluation strategies and contracts with vendors and with collaborators to ensure that all of their due diligence is performed. So when taking it from that approach, then healthcare organizations should have a thoughtful consortium agreement that lays the roles and responsibilities of each of the organizations involved what the technology validation strategies will be, what the testing strategies will be, and what the ongoing oversight will look like. The healthcare organizations are capable of being able to implement this. It just requires thoughtful planning from more of a collaborative approach. When we think about implementing blockchain, it is critical to have a very forward-thinking approach to how are we going to measure what we set out to do. And so just like with a health information technology, organizations should have a very thoughtful approach to what specifically they are trying to achieve with when adding blockchain to their existing infrastructure. So part of this starts with evaluating the mission and the vision and the strategic plan of the organization to ensure that they design needs that would best be in alignment with the organization's goals and directions. Once coming up with specific goals, then it's necessary to craft metrics that help or understand how the blockchain is functioning. I like to use the ISO framework 9241-11 um, for creating metrics for efficiency, effectiveness, and satisfaction. And so those types of metrics would be uh, performance-related metrics, uh, user metrics, financial metrics, and we can't forget about the users and user satisfaction metrics, such as surveys and interviews. Once we have all of those metrics uh, in place, it's valuable to create some baseline evaluations first. Find out, well, what is our current functioning before we implement a blockchain? And then once we implement, to create strategic milestones where we're going to evaluate our progress and determine how successful we've been. Another thing I like to do is compare against baseline and, uh, excuse me, industry benchmarks. And with industry benchmarks, then you can get a sense of how well you are performing relative to the industry that you are, are currently functioning in. These benchmarks and metrics create valuable information to determine how best to target the next phase of implementation, how to achieve a higher budget, how to expand or improve capabilities. And so metric collection should be part of really any implementation of health information technology, but since blockchain is viewed skeptically by some, we feel it's even more critical to have metrics for a blockchain implementation. introduction of the 21st Century Cures Act, there has been a lot of focus about how we can create a better patient experience. One of the aspects that was specifically targeted was the component of blocking. And for those not familiar with it, blocking is when either a healthcare organization or a technology interferes with a patient's use, 
access or sharing of their health information. And so when blockchain is implemented as a layer or a piece of a health information technology solution, the goal is to give patients more granular capabilities of how they can use and share their health information. And they can do so in ways that's less reliant on the healthcare organization for sharing that information. It gives patients more control. And similar with interoperability, many instances of blockchain currently use blockchain as a layer on top of the health information systems, such as the electronic health record systems, so that it serves as pipes that can integrate systems, organizations, and allow for better sharing of information. It's something that Yes, healthcare organizations can achieve without blockchain, but with blockchain, they can do it so much more efficiently and at lower cost. And it's much easier to maintain oversight for how organizations are compliant with those capabilities. So blockchain is currently in place with helping healthcare organizations. And I think over time, we're gonna see a lot more utilization and a lot more benefit from using blockchain to achieve these 21st Century Cures Act uh, requirements. To address the quadruple aim, healthcare organizations should focus on how a technology can best meet those components of improved patient experience, improved clinical experience, better outcomes, and lower costs. So blockchain has achieved those aspects of the quadruple aim already. And while some organizations are kind of early in their development, there are some established examples of how blockchain has helped healthcare organizations to achieve that. So just for a single example, but just to make it real, the company that I work for, Burst IQ, had worked with a, a large healthcare network in Utah and used a blockchain to integrate several different health information technology systems that would never talk to each other, that do not have interoperable information, and were able to integrate them in near real-time data sharing so that the healthcare organization could achieve near real-time views in how their surgical costs were being implemented across the organization. And in doing so, they were able to address specific patient outcomes based on supplies, specific approaches, and looked at length of stay, cost of stay, cost of surgeries. And as a result of being able to target specific areas, the healthcare organization experienced uh, much greater improved patient outcomes and saved $90 million over three years. So this is real money for a real example of how blockchain can make an enormous difference toward the quadruple aim. For the future of health information technology, we actually learned quite a bit from the COVID experience. If anything good came out of COVID, it was that healthcare organizations were forced to drive more technology-based solutions at creating better patient-centered healthcare. I believe over the next five years, we're going to see healthcare organizations do even more outreach to care for patients where they live and where they work to be able to connect more of their wearables and other sensor devices to monitor them more safely and more effectively at home. And I believe we're going to see more blockchain utilized in healthcare organizations. <laughs>